Hey, it's Steve from Proud of Bristol Bay. We're here in my backyard with my homemade smoker. We're gonna take you along and show you the process of smoking wild sockeye salmon. All right, so this is my homemade smokehouse. I made it from the pretty much the scraps when we got done building our house uh, 12 years ago. And uh, it's just rough cut hemlock. I put a cinder blocks in the ground and um, they're not anchored anyway. And I just built a uh, pressure treated frame and built a you know one pitch roof I like um, larger size smokehouse because you know we'll be butchering deer here pretty soon we can put about a hundred pounds of bologna kielbasa sausage in here we'll also smoke deer hams and um, quite a bit of salmon throughout the year so it works out great for what I need in my family we, we pretty much put up all our own food Again, nothing special. It's kind of fun to build things like this because you just kind of use the materials you have and um, put it together. So you can see that we've smoked quite a bit in here by the, the color of the wood and the soot that's in there. I like a smokehouse that's got ventilation so I don't, I don't put battens over my boards where they meet because I want the air to kind of flow through and that smoke to kind of keep going. And um, it also works well with the, the style of the fire. So I just got a stone floor in it. And then we'll take this pan with our um, fire in it, set it right in the middle, and then add our smoked wood. And for starters, I'll take this lid and I'll just set the lid on top and it'll help make it smolder. So this is my what I use to control my heat and my smoke is by putting this on or off to, to get the temperature and the amount of smoke I need. This guy's just in here for when I have hot fires and I'm trying to get stuff to like 160 degrees. It, it's a little safety shield. In the winter, you have to have a bigger fire because with the ventilation and there's not the insulation that uh, other smokers have. So when it's below 32, you just have to have a stronger fire and um, windy days takes a little longer. But one of the things that I'd like to stress is, you know, this is a process that isn't precise. You can um, smoke salmon today, you know, if the temperatures are good outside to, to let it hang, you can smoke it, let it go out, start a fire when you come home from work, let it go out overnight, start another fire. You know, you don't have to have it all done exactly at one time. All right, so we're gonna get started um, building the fire for the smoker. So I just take some scraps out of my wood shop, kind of chop them up into kindling. Today we're using, well, this is maple, and then um, once we put the actual smoking wood on, that will be um, a combination of both maple and cherry, black cherry. My favorite variety for smoking wild sockeye is maple, and I think it just has a nice mild um, smoke flavor to it. It's closest to um, alder, which is kind of like a Pacific Northwest species, and it's, it's a favorite smoking wood for salmon in the Pacific Northwest. So um, I've, I've enjoyed that. Some of the other options are sassafras, um, hickory, apple, any of the fruit woods. Fruit woods tend to have a little bit kind of sweeter smoke to them. Hickory will be kind of more stronger pronounced. I think it takes away from the salmon taste. Also you can use mesquite and that's a has a fairly strong um, smoke flavor as well. And basically you just want your fire to smolder once you get your hot bed of ashes and you stick some wet green wood on there, which is what I prefer because it, it smolders um, and doesn't ignite uh, as quick. And um, so you just want that to smolder for the first, you know, four hours, five hours of the process and let that smoke penetrate this fish. Once you've got a good smoke on the fish, th then um, I'll take and turn the heat up by adding more wood, maybe giving it a little bit more air, and um, then I'll take it to about 135 degrees roughly over the next couple hours and finish it off at that point. 
All right, so we're gonna mix up a brine solution today to get ready to brine and then smoke three fillets of sockeye salmon. And it's roughly about five pounds of fish that we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna just do a simple traditional brine, salt, brown sugar, and regular sugar. So um, we'll start with a gallon of water. And just normal tap water temperature is fine. You just don't want to have your solution hot when you stick your fish in it. You want it to be um, at least cool. All right, we're gonna add, um, for five pounds of fish, I'm gonna add one cup of salt. And then um, I've been using a half a cup of brown sugar and a half a cup of just organic sugar, cane sugar. until all the sugar and salt is dissolved. All right, now that we have the brine solution good and mixed up, move it over here and prepare the salmon to be put in. So here's a filet that we took out last night, just put in the fridge, thawed it out. Um, completely thawed out. You wanna have a good sharp knife so you don't destroy the filet as you're cutting it. So for what we're doing today, making the uh, salmon slice pieces, we're gonna take the filet, I just kinda cut it in thirds. And then once it's cut in thirds, turn the filet. You gotta kinda put your finger back here to kinda just keep it. Again, a sharp knife is very important. And then I just cut about half inch to three quarter inch slices and then place them in the, in the brine. And for eating the salmon, kind of how we take it for snacks a lot, um, it, these strips seem to work really well with the kids. They prefer them over kind of taking a, a large chunk like this and smoking it and prying it apart. So um, I kind of like to think of it more as salmon jerky. And just make sure you run your hand through there and get them separated, nothing stuck together, um, so that the brine solution can get on all the sides. So now we have all the salmon cut in strips and placed in the brine. I'll just stir it one last time and uh, then we're gonna let it sit for 45 minutes. All right, so our 45 minutes have been up, so I'll just bring it over to the sink, drain the brine solution off, and I'm just gonna give it a quick rinse to get any excess salt off there, so it, um, if your brine is a little bit salty or you have a little bit uh, less fish in there, it helps to keep it from being too salty. Let's put it on a rack. So before I put it on my uh, smoking rack, and this is just an old rack out of a refrigerator. And uh, so I'll just take some olive oil and spray the rack. And then we'll just take these strips and we'll just start laying them long ways um, on the grate so they don't fall through. The olive oil keeps the skin from sticking fast. It makes it a lot easier to take off the rack at the, at the end of the process. Just put it skin side down. Um, seems to work the best.
Placing the fish kind of directly above the fire. Fire is just smoldering. We'll shut the door, and uh, I'm going to be here today. So I'm going to let it smolder for you know the next four hours, and uh, I'll tend the fire as needed. Put a little bit more heat on it if needed. Add more green wood, and um, and then at that point after four hours. We'll start to add bigger chunks of wood, maybe a little drier wood, get the temperature up in the 135 degree range, and then um, it'll be done in about eight hours. Mm -hmm. 